somewhat undelightful Friday. It's just kind of yucky outside. There's no sun, it's all clouds, it's kind of, I don't know, melancholy or whatever. So it's put me in a dampened mood, but um, we're here anyway. <laughs> um, for those that have been wondering or that have been, you know, like uh, trying to suggest things for my cough and stuff, uh, you'll be happy to know that I visited the doctor yesterday. Again, this will be the third time I've been to her for this. Um, and I have a new um, puffer thing. Uh, the first one she gave me was uh, like a like a wet spray, like an aerosol type of thing. And I also got some antibiotics, and uh, then later um, I was given some cough syrup. But this one is um, like a powder, like just a little minuscule amount, and you have to like inhale it really deep to kind of get it into your lungs and stuff. So far, it seems to be um, kind of showing a little improvement. Um, I'm just, it's not that the cough is completely gone, but I seem to be able to go a lot longer before it starts acting up. Of course, I've only been using it for, um, see, I started taking, uh, using it yesterday evening, so it may, uh, there may be better indication of if it's going well um, by next week. So fingers crossed that uh, this is, uh, the last thing that I have to use for that because really it has um, been uh, quite the annoyance uh, not just for you guys because um, I happened to hear myself on the stream yesterday when I was uh, uploading it to YouTube and I was like oh my gosh this is so loud but I just I really couldn't help it and you know while I um, regret that I had to do it um, I still I didn't want to miss streaming either so uh, let me just do a quick tweet. Probably should add pictures to these things, but uh, I don't know. I'm lazy. So anyway, we're back for some more uh, turkey stuff. Um, it's the 20th of November, and I believe um, Turkey Day in the States lands on the 24th. Um, it's been uh, like 15 plus years since I've celebrated, officially celebrated uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, we, we have turkey and stuff and, and things, you know, pumpkin pie and, and pecan pie and things over here, but it's not on this particular holiday or anything uh, because, you know, that's an American thing and they just don't do that here. Um, plus the fact that some of the things that you would normally think of having, like, uh, uh, stovetop stuffing and, and uh, cranberry sauce and, and of course even the pumpkin pie uh, to an extent. Um, you just can't find a lot of that stuff over here. Um, you'd have to go to like the specialty shops because it took me a, a long time to find um, like canned pumpkin you know and uh, basically I've ended up when I do um, my pumpkin pies I end up using just an actual pumpkin and I uh, cut it up and, and cook it and everything and, and prep it for pie making. Uh, the the issue with that is you really have to watch the water content because uh, like any other kind of melon it's really watery so you have to really uh, get rid of that otherwise your pie doesn't work out right. <laughs> but um, yeah uh, so even though I don't actually celebrate it anymore um, you know most of still a majority of my lifetime I did with my family though so I know that there's probably some US players that uh, wouldn't mind uh, coming up with some ideas for um, that particular holiday if they want to express a happy Thanksgiving and send a little you know screeny or something to their friends or family so uh, I guess it was Monday we um, did some uh, little bits uh, we did a turkey um, and some corn on the cob and uh, started a pumpkin pie and some other things uh, like potatoes and carrots and, and asparagus uh, bunches and things like that. Um, you'll notice there's an actual kind of a couple of dollops that I've been trying. Um, I had kind of forgotten about the snow covered trees and rocks. So I thought, hmm, those are pretty uh, white, so I'm going to try them. And uh, let's see, I think, I think this one is the rock. 
Yeah, it's the dust covered sandstone. Uh, while it's white and it kind of looks like a dollop, it's a little funny shaped. Um, depending on what angle you're looking at, it looks more like a like a disc, like the end of a plate or something sticking up. Um, so I tried the top of the uh, snow cover, uh, snowy tree, the curved one. Um, it's just the uh, really big one, and I'm just using the very tip top of it um, for for the dollop. Now I thought about using. You could either go and put a dollop on each slice, or um, one way to kind of cut back on the number of pieces that you're using. Because um, when you get into this, a lot of this custom building, the pieces uh, when you're making all these little bits, it adds up really fast. So you know, you might want to take that into consideration. You could just um, make the dollop a little larger and put it just smack in the middle so that in theory, as you slice the pie, everybody will get a little bit on the end that they can kind of uh, enjoy. I think that's what we're going to do with this one. We're just going to put one big dollop of whipped topping there. Now you'll notice we had tried to make um, one of our viewers uh, mentioned using sour cream with their uh, desserts and we tried the sour cream dollop here and you can see how much of a difference um, the choice of decor can make. This is the uh, the white eggs, uh, spider eggs, and this is the snow tree. Uh, really big difference. So if you want to do the, the dollop of sour cream in a bowl, Again, I would go with the tree because um, that really, this looks nasty looking. It's, just looks like somebody left it out. It's, you know, maybe if you're going for like um, a haunted house kind of feast setting that's been left and is mildewed and, you know, got spider webs all over it and it just looks yucky, then the spider web dollop would look great. Um, but uh, for this particular thing, we're wanting it to look yummy, so um, you definitely want to go. Uh, the only downside possibly is the cost of the tree. It is two gold per, so if you're using it for anything, uh, you know, a lot of, then, you know, it may uh, cost you a bit to, to finish it off. <coughs> See? There I go. was waiting for it. <laughs> Okay, um, so the, uh, the other thing that we talked about was the uh, loaf of bread. Now usually I, um, I uh, well I'll, I'll show you, it's, um, I'm just going to get another one of these planks. It's really just the cheese platter and I've got it turned upside down so the cheese doesn't actually show. I'm going to bring this over on this side, I think, just to kind of, you'll notice too, I finished off the table, I gave it some legs and filled in the side so that you can't see all of the stuff at the bottom. Um, maybe someone could finagle their camera just so, so that it actually shows, it looks like I didn't get that nice and flat with the table, so the cheese is showing, tuck that in a bit. Same with this one. Again, it's always important when you're doing this, just kind of check from all angles because you never know what's showing, what's not. Now I need to go and lower all of these down. Hey Mario, welcome to the show. Okay, my floaty biscuits here, my crackers. Might not be a bad thing that I have to lower the one because it looks like um, they're kind of smushed together anyway. Okay, that looks a little better. So, back to the bread. Um, I've seen this done a number of ways, and but I'm, whoops, just kind of hopped right out of the house there. I'll show you how I normally do it. I did this um, when I did my Tangled uh, themed home. 
uh, or in the, um, the Cuddly Rust Hour uh, Tavern, I am a bit of a gap there. I set one up on one of the tables just to give it something there and rather than leaving all of the tables empty. Um, I didn't want to put something on every table that it because then it feels kind of forced but I wanted at least to have a little bit of something on there and I didn't want to just do the usual cheese board so I, I used toast to make a loaf of bread. And I've got six slices here. Uh, I'm hoping that'll be enough. It should be but uh, we'll see. So first what I do is I figure out the, the size of the loaf. I just kind of get the loaf situated on the board like I want and then I just kind of size it down so that it doesn't look uh, too big. And these are like what I would call like Texas toast, they're really thick. And uh, and chunky, so we're gonna make this the end, I think. And then we're just going to um, duplicate it and bring it forward. And same thing, we're just going to keep going. Now you could do the kati as one with the difference and, and make sure you get a space just so, but this is just kind of a quick thing, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Now I'm only going to place five of them for the loaf bit, because um, you always, I don't know, I always like, um, want to have the one slice laying on the, the, the board flat. So I'm going to put up five uh, pieces of the bread here and then um, we'll lay the sixth one down. Maybe I can get it to quit twirling around like a ballerina. You feel like chicken now, huh? Well, <laughs> sorry if I made you hungry. It's one of those things, everybody's gotta have a little bit of food, foodstuffs. It's always fun to make up foodstuffs. Because, you know, while we do have a lot of um, food pieces um, of decor, it's still fairly lacking, in my opinion. <coughs> now, it probably really isn't necessary if you, um, since we don't have like a, a brown end that doesn't have little squigglies on it. But for me, I always felt like the loaf should be kind of... Um, uh, have like a thick end in the middle and then as it comes to the end get a little more narrow. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that as well as I normally would because like I said I only have the six slices but um, we're going to see. I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring that one down just a bit. That was at 40 and I'm going to go You gotta get it um, just the the size so that it doesn't look like it's you know too jagged like that. You want it kind of um, smooth on the top, even if you kind of sink it down in, into the the uh, board a little bit. Um, just so that it's really a gradual upping. <laughs> I don't think that's the right word, but you'll see what I mean as even if I tuck this down a bit, it's still going to be kind of pulled out a little too far on the side, so I'll probably uh, knock that down just a little bit more. So again, if you're going to get really detailed like this, uh, more pieces would probably work best. It's just I, I quickly 
grabbed, uh, crafted up six and just went with it from there. So it doesn't look like I'm going to get it just exactly like I'm hoping, but you'll get the idea. You would probably do it like 0.1 step each time just to make sure it doesn't look too, too much of a, a change in the height. So there's my little kind of, like a little bit of a tiered loaf. I mean, you know, it goes from a small end to a big end kind of thing. <clears throat> and again, if you um, have better luck with working with the items bigger, um, because it is kind of tedious to, to do this with these arrows and things in the way and when you're working with something really small it can be difficult to see and to get everything just right and like the camera might not want to zoom in just where you want it you know depending on how your character is able to get to it that kind of thing it might be a little difficult so Sometimes I work bigger, sometimes I just go with it small. For me, personally, I prefer to kind of work with it the size that I plan on keeping it. Just so that I can make sure everything looks proportional to everything else. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So it doesn't look so, so much bigger than the loaf itself. So there you go. You got like a, a gradually growing... You know, and theoretically, if you had a full loaf, you'd have it like go back down to the small end. So you'd have like little ends on and then the big one. Um, you could probably push the toast down if you want to make more like a like a baguette or something that might work. Um, but yeah, we're just going to leave it like that. And then you can, you know, put your knife down or like it's handy ready for uh, be used or whatever same way with the turkey you could put a knife in it as well um, if you plan on using soups and stuff use a spoon um, for like the ladle or whatever you don't have an actual ladle looking spoon but you know you work with what you got hey bones <coughs> excuse me so that's a good kind of variety of food things. I mean, you can go, you can include um, the stock pieces like the pig platter and uh, uh, the ones that's, uh, they're on a, uh, like the kebabs. Um, use those, um, shrink them down and have like three or four like little mini kebabs on a plate that would work. Um, have the fruit bowl. Uh, not only the one that you know already has fruit in it, but you know grab a couple of others and then make your own fruit bowls by adding some of the bunches of grapes and the hanging fruit and stuff like that in it, and, and that'll help fill out your your feast table. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at is um, I'm just going to extend this a little bit. Just gonna extend the table for now. I'm not gonna mess with the legs and stuff. Um, but basically, all I used was two by fours for the table top. Um, because of the length of it, it's one full length. They're just uh, well, they're not standard size, but I just set it up, and then I um, for the sides, I kind of used this to kind of hide the parts that I didn't want and even it up so it was an equal two little pieces of board. So, depending on what sizes you use, you might want to do something different, but... And then for the legs, it was the uh, metal-edged um, bits. Not two by fours, it's uh, yeah, metal-edged rectangle block. What a name for that. So, what we're going to uh, look at now is um, 
setting up a place setting. Uh, I see a lot of people do different things and some are a little bit more detailed than others because typically um, a lot of builders they'll just put down a, a plate maybe a fork, a knife, and a spoon, and then a glass, and call it good. Um, but there are other things you can do to kind of dress it up even more. So we're gonna look at putting something together, showing different ways of uh, doing like your silverware, and maybe adding a napkin or under a placemat kind of thing. So naturally, rugs are great for um, placemats. You can use the, the round ones, um, or the oblong ones. I've seen it both ways. Uh, I've used it both ways, so. And you just pick one and uh, then go from there. So we'll put down a round one here. Might be a little above because this particular rug is not exactly straight flat. It's got a little bit of a like a curve to it, so it's a little awkward to work with, especially if you're using it on a really flat surface. It kind of acts a little funny. Um, the other one that we'll try and use is um, the flat one here. Well, the rectangle one, I should say. Is it too is not uh, exactly flat, I don't think. Make that one, uh, I guess 10 was okay. And we're just gonna get that nice and square. So there's there's that. Uh, for napkins, I've seen people use um, the towels. Obviously, is a good choice. Um, just shrink them down really small. Um, I'm not sure if I have one. No, I, I still didn't send any over. Oops. Yeah, I didn't send any over. So. Um, I've seen some use uh, the rugs as the napkin part, um, but uh, you could probably use anything flat and lighter in color. So uh, we're just gonna, just for the sake of um, using it, we're gonna go with um, some Oren. <coughs> we're gonna lay down a triangle piece. And um, 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 looking for the floor. I know I use these pieces in a lot of things, but um, they're cheap, pretty easy to work with. They go with just about anything, so I like using them. What can I say? I'm gonna make it fairly small. Is, you know your napkin doesn't want that you, your napkin isn't it's supposed to be as big as your plate uh, you want to kind of dig it gonna put that there for now and same way with this one I'll explain more about why I'm using the triangle here shortly uh, go ahead and lay that down now Pardon me. Okay, so with the um, the square napkins, you can use it just as the square if you want. Um, you could make what they call the um, uh, the silverware pocket, um, where you do like. like so, and I would probably up it just a little more to kind of emphasize that line there, so it's not perfect. And then insert um, the forks and, and knives and stuff in there. So now, because this is like super thin, you'll have to kind of fake it a little bit. 
So I'll see if I can show an example of what I mean. So I'm going to just rotate this a little bit so that the, the the end of the fork that you weren't showing is still peeking through, but you tuck the other part in. So it makes it look like a little like a little napkin pocket. And you do that this, you know, the same with your, your knife, your spoon, and then that'd be your, your little set of silverware. Um, for the triangle one, um, you could maybe try to make um, uh, other different kinds of folded napkins like um, the hat fold or uh, something like that, but you could just leave it. Um, I've got that. Just leave it um, a double piece of, of uh, napkin just sitting there because um, you know depending on how you have it uh, folded uh, I fold mine into triangles sometimes it's like the uh, the the square it looks boring so I just fold it in half and then you put my silverware along it like that you could have several um, layered up in a little stack if you've got like a kind of a buffet going on and you want several laid out that way um, but I really like the little pocket idea because um, it just <laughs> brings a little bit more life to the uh, to the bit. I don't know. Um, but if you leave it just the one over here, uh, I normally line up the the edge here uh, with the, the setting and. Uh, then I put the silverware along this. If I can show you what I'm talking about here. Now this one, of course, you don't want the fork being kind of warped that way, so. Pop it up and bring it like so. And then you would just bring it across. Um, some don't like that because uh, then your your silverware is hanging off the sides over here, but it's really just preference. Um, usually, I kind of just kind of pile them up on the end. I'm talking real life when I'm saying that, because uh, normally I don't go so much through so much trouble on setting my table. I kind of get a uh, I don't do a whole lot of tables, and if I do, it's more like I've just got the meal there and uh, I don't set everybody's uh, place sitting. Uh, but I've noticed a lot of uh, dining rooms that folks, they have like the whole shebang with, you know, the centerpieces and the wine glasses and all the chairs. And, and uh, so this is just some extra little ideas for folks that like setting their entire table up. Um, so you could like line up these food dishes all down the middle and then um, put your place settings here. It may require that you have to make this a little wider because, you know, as you can see, I've, the platters that I've used are pretty big. Um, it really just depends on the size that you make all of your food. Um, but if you set that up in, in this manner, this is easy enough to just pull that out one more board across and you'd be good. It might be a little unrealistic for people having to reach, you know, miles away just to get their mashed potatoes or something. but. Um, at least visually it'll look a little nice so that you'll have like a center row of food and centerpieces and stuff and then along the edges will be your your place settings um as far as the place and things go um i've seen a lot of people do different things sometimes it's just the one plate the one bowl um but you you know don't be afraid to layer them um, you know because you set it usually um like um uh when uh, I attend some parties here uh, and there's like caters, they usually have the, the whole setting up 
um, that covers basically the entire meal for the night. They'll have like the salad and soup bowl and the, the dessert plate and the dinner plate and the appetizer thing and all of the forks and all of the spoons, even though you don't use everything all at once. They just have you set it aside, you put it to the side and then they use whatever bits they need. And like the silverware, whatever you're using first, I think it starts on the outside and you just work your way in, something like that. But uh, if you want to do something similar, uh, the best way to do that is to just, uh, <coughs> excuse me, start with the plate and then put in another plate and then find uh, a bowl. Yes, we're kind of limited on colors. Uh, we don't have like uh, a big variety of plates with different kinds of symbols and, and things like that. You could probably, if you wanted to take the time to fashion one, you might could. Um, now, you'll notice... Sorry, I thought I heard the phone. All the doors are closed from upstairs to downstairs, so it's really hard to hear. And uh, anyway, um, you'll notice that it's kind of off centered. A, a quick way to do that is just to copy the transform of the piece that you want it centered on and then paste that transform to uh, the part that you want to be centered. I'm going to try that again because I don't think it took. There we go. The only thing is you'll have to readjust the size there. So I know it's in the center. You just have to kind of uh, finagle about the height and everything. So there's the plate. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy that and paste it. Again, it's going to copy the size as well. Um, but just adjust it as you need. You want it to be a little different. And then I'm going to bump it up just so that it's clearly uh, a different piece. And then I'm going to take the bowl and do the same thing. Of course, that one naturally comes in really huge. So you have like a dinner plate, a salad bowl, soup bowl, and then like just kind of like a starter or something. And then uh, at least it looks, you know, a little different than just the plate by itself. Um, let's see, trying to think what else you might want to include. Um, of course, the napkins. I choose. I chose the the orange one, but you can choose different ones as well. Um, you could go for like maybe a table runner using these. Um, let's let's try. Uh, now I want the walls. So, well, I think that messed up because I was standing too close to it. Let's see if it put it back in here. Yes, it did. Oh, as a warning, um, I saw a post by Katia this morning um, in the, the housing forum uh, that there is a a potentially um, serious housing bug going on. I haven't experienced it myself that I know of, but um, it sounded pretty bad. So um, what it is, is apparently there are decor pieces that are disappearing. That's not that they go to crate or that uh, they get deleted or anything. They're just, they're just gone. Um, they're not on the plot. They're not you know, relocated or whatever by the person is just suddenly their, their, um, 
what exactly is causing it or triggers it or if it's any particular pieces. Um, I, I couldn't tell that they had figured out if there was any kind of rhyme or reason to it. So just be aware um, that there are some issues going on and it may not be fun. Okay, so I, I just kind of eyeballed about where it is and then Now the only thing is, uh, a lot of people might be bugged by this little bracket here. If that is the case, then you could use something that doesn't have that bit. Uh, for me, it doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, You could use that to your advantage, putting up the sections like maybe this would be desserts and this is like the main course and this is something else. Um, have um, one section for all of your utensils and stuff, one section for all your bottles of wine and things. You know, just, you know, while we have limitations in certain things, um, I always try to find the right side of whatever is. Uh, causing trouble or being a little cantankerous. Um, like a lot of people were upset when they changed the plot sizes, like, well, you know, just learn to work around it. See, you'll notice that my uh, ladders and stuff will be a little off now because of the, the table liner, but, you know, it'll work. Same way with my turkey. I see, I don't know where that end is, so I'm just kind of guessing. But what you could do is just link it all up together and lift it as one piece. Um, so, like, um, we move that back down. And just linked everything up with the platter. You should be able to lift it as one piece. Well, not turn it. Hitting the wrong arrow here. The only thing you have to worry about with this is because it's um, sunken into the table, it might look a little off on the edges here. It's something you'd have to take into consideration. Maybe you don't want the platter for um, the, uh, the pumpkin pie. You could leave the pumpkin pie just to itself, maybe. Let's try that. No, not destroy. So just leave the, the pumpkin pie by itself, maybe. So I'm going to link it all to the bowl. And you can see there's a lot of bits sticking out here now. Old pumpkin. I'm just kind of centering this on that. Ribbon thing. And then we'll just move cheese board and stuff. Working it in this custom set really takes a lot of patience. If you are not, um, if, if patience is not a strong point of yours, uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it does take a lot. Now I'm putting it really close to the bowl. Normally I wouldn't probably, but I'm kind of trying to hide a lot of that uh, pumpkin bit that I didn't want showing is kind of poking through the cheese, but maybe it'll, somebody will think it's like a toothpick or something. Um, I did notice that this um, bit here is a little off.
Looks like these have kind of like wonkied. I'm going to check them real quick. Yeah, they're like offsetting a bit. Whoops. Jumping for joy there. Just slowly started going. Bleh. Always good to go back and check. Check your stuff. Never know what's gonna. Looks like it's even off lined up too. Yeah, slightly off there too. Okay. So you just continue that all the way down and then adjust your plates and stuff as, as you need. We'll just. have the pumpkin showing too much through okay so you got like table runner you can um, have it hanging off as well if you want just to kind of add an extra little flair to it you could um, if you want to go through the trouble find something that has like a design that can kind of pop through and have it like a motif on here. Uh, neon might work all right, but it's kind of weird, I think, um, to have lights on here. <coughs> Excuse me. But, you know, something else that you could think of, or maybe some flowers, um, like the top of a flower. Let's see. Um, I can show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go for an easy one. God, I can't spell. So, like, grab the, the flower. And uh, I think this is one of the few ones that doesn't move, which is really nice. I mean, I know it's good when the plants do move, because then you can kind of have that extra bit of... It's uh, lively, you know, the wind's affecting it and all the kinds. But sometimes there are situations where you don't want it to move. And um, like if you want to make a painting or something for your wall, uh, that becomes a bit of an issue. Be a little tricky to get that one not to show up. But if you can figure out a way to do it, then for it. Well, anyway, you get the idea. You probably find a find one that is a little easier to work with, and then just dot it around. Make it really small, um, and you could, you know, do several of them and have like a little pattern going. This takes a lot. something like that and just decorate it all around good for like a summer um, festival or something uh, that kind of thing um, whoops deleted the wrong thing I'll bring that back Okay, so um, as far as uh, centerpieces, there's a variety of things you can go with. You could use a bowl with flowers. Um, you could use um, like a little tray. Uh, the uh, gutters, the rain gutters would work well for a tray. Um, just use the tray and then fill it in with um, like sandbags or something for dirt. and. Uh, 
then put your plants in. Um, usually when I'm planning out a, a centerpiece, I think about what's the main thing for it. Like, is it going to have like candles in it? Um, how long is it going to be? Is it going to be a, a vertical kind of wise? Is it going to be a round? Um, for this particular set, a vertical would probably work best. So then you pick um, like the kind of greens you want. Thanksgiving, normally you go with golds, browns, um, oranges, a little bit of red. Um, you can have some green in there too, but not a whole lot. In my opinion, it's usually just fall colors, and usually that doesn't mean uh, a lot of green. Um, we've done some in the in the past. Uh, I've got an alt that has a, a fall wreath that we did. Um, in fact, I could go show you that real quick. Let's see. I think her plot's open. For any of you that's been with me for a while, you'll you'll recognize it. It's just uh, I noticed too. I changed the water. It used to be just glass here, and I experimented with using. Um, I think it was the Winding River uh, water decor. But this is the wreath I'm talking about. It's uh, a holiday wreath. Uh, I've also got it on my main plot um, for another thing. But um, basically, it's just the golden wheatgrass or the ringlet. And then I've added in, uh, you can see there's a little bit of green. It's at what it actually is, is the Oran fence post. Because I wanted the acorns. Even though you really can't see most of them, they're just little tiny. <laughs> Bits. I, I wanted acorns in my wreath and um, that was the only way I could get it nicely without having too much poking around funny. And of course then the pumpkins um, for the bottom part. Um, but that's all it is. It's just a bunch of um, grass clumps and a little bit of extra stuff. Um, of course the bow is made out of cheese. My husband thinks that's so hilarious. I don't know why, but he just thinks that's the funniest looking thing ever. But uh, it's the only thing I could come up with that could give me both the bow part and the, the ends, um, kind of. So it's a very golden looking uh, wreath and very appropriate for um, Thanksgiving, I think. In my opinion, anyway. So back to the main house. The bone, bone says the, the bow makes her hungry. Well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's some of those edible wreaths, you know, after the holidays you just snack on it. <laughs> and then you don't have to put it away for next year. So, um, we did do one uh, in the last kind of holiday workshop that we did um, for... Uh, For the mantle, uh, we did a little bit of a kind of a gar garland kind of thing, just a straight garland. Um, the tricky bit about it was um, it was made out of, um, part of it was the the uh, the fruit trellis, and that thing is like three um, uh, poles and then it's got viney gourds and stuff hanging on it and everything. And in the case of the, of the fireplace, I was able to hide most of it into the wall, which is where it, what it was up against and everything. In this situation, um, while I do allow a bit of space, you know, using the, <coughs> the size of the table <coughs> to be able to hide most anything that I'm sticking out at the bottom, the trellis for sure wouldn't be hidden. It would go all the way down through into the floor and you'd see it poking out here. So we don't want to go that way. Even though it does have those nice yellow gourds, um, I'll see if I can. Uh, yeah, it's got these nice little um, fall fruits on them. 
And I had used, I think it was this one here, and I just turned it to the side and had that going across um, the, um, the mantle. Um, but like I said, in this case, I can't do that because unless you build a table that's completely all the way down to the floor or has some kind of big solid base in the middle rather than the four legs on the sides, you build it up like that way, that's a different story altogether. But the way I've built the table here, it's necessary that I can't use this because it'll be showing, it'll definitely um, poke through. Because um, I think even at the size that it is, I will show you what I'm talking about, but uh, I'm pretty confident that there's no way that I can get it where it doesn't show. Um, unless that you make it super small and then it's kind of pointless because you're not going to see anything anyway. But if I was able to, I would just use it straight up like this and use that as my base and build around it. But again, see, you're going to see part of the vine hanging down. Um, and if I make it smaller, so that it's not so gargantuanly huge on this, then you're going to see even more. So it's, while it's handy in some instances, um, in this particular one, it's not going to be. So what to do instead. Um, right off the bat, the first thing I want to uh, think about is um, the grasses that I'm going to use. Am I going to go with the golden wheat grass again? Um, Do I want to go with the golden one or one that's got a little bit of green in it? Um, the only thing about this one I don't like is it's kind of, um, it's not full looking. It's got these little crisscross, you know, bits so that you look at it at a certain angle, it's like there's a hole in the middle and, and things like that. Um, these are nice colors, but they're huge. If you, bring it in then it's like you get it to the right size as you want but then there's like nothing there because they're so teeny tiny and it takes several because depending on the angle again that you're looking at it it looks less full than it does when you're looking at it from the other side so you usually have to do one from this direction and then stick another one down from this direction so that both directions it looks full just a uh, kind of annoyance um Again, it's all those. This is the most full and clumpy that I know of. Um, I'm gonna look at uh, uh, bushes though, just to see what we have. This will be a good one for uh, a Winterfest one, because Winterfest you've got the green coming in. That's you know, because you're thinking pine, you know, evergreen kind of stuff, and so the green that for that would be ideal. Same way with this, that would be all right for Winterfest. Did use these as uh, another kind of fruit, which I'll probably try and use with this particular one. I'm just looking to see if we have anything else. Uh, if you've got enough of these, that might work. Um, you don't want to look in like, like dead, dead. I think. I think we'll just go with the, the wheat grass. <coughs> I think that'll be easiest. And we've already got several because I think I built the the wreath here first originally and then I moved it to the other plot. So um, we're just going to do it for this little bit here, this little stretch. So I'm going to start in the center. And obviously it's too huge that way. Now, um, on the, the mantle one, I did it differently. I had it setting on its side and then had it like end to end so it had a little variety, but I'm just going to go with it straight up this time and 
and see if that'll work. Um, uh, it looks pretty centered there too, so I'm just gonna grab a few clumps. I'm gonna space them out a little bit because I think I'm gonna change the sizes of a few of them. And I don't wanna get where if I enlarge one, then I hide the others and I can't figure out what's what. So I'm gonna start with um, the center one and make it the biggest of the bunch. Not that big, but bigger. There we go. And then we'll make this one in between the two sizes. My slider is just going nuts because, and then I'm also going to rotate it a little bit just to give it a little different. And then I'm going to do the same with the little ones. I'm just going to change their orientation just a little bit and bring them in. I'm going to leave that one the same, just kind of tuck it in. So now you have kind of, it's almost like the loaf of bread all over again, but it's like a spiky worm kind of look. <laughs> like, uh, we call them, uh, uh, gosh, I can't remember, woolly boogers, I think, woolly booger worms. That's not, I'm sure that's not actually what they're called, but that's what we called them when we were little. They were like really fuzzy looking caterpillars or something. Anyway, um, and we're going to have candles for this, so. And uh, I usually go with the tall ones um, for all of them, because even though you can use the short one and the medium to give even more variety. Um... I don't know, I turn it on and so it automatically comes up when, it, I don't know, it always comes up for me. <laughs> I think when you first um, load your your item, you it's off, but I always use mine on so I don't turn it off at any point, so I guess that's why um, it stays on for me, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, it just, um, I don't know. I use it, so anyway. Um, even though it's it's great to use the different sized candles to get some different looks, um, I really like the tall one because um, it just lends itself for me better um, to certain kinds of arrangements like this. Um, so to kind of make up for that, I just rotate it here and there. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show, Algorithma. Um, it's always nice to see new faces. Not that the old faces or names are bad, you know. I love you guys too, Bones and Mario and everybody else, but uh, it's always fun to see new ones pop in. Okay, so I'm just getting the, the middle one kind of like I want it, and then we'll um, copy them off. Yeah, for um, anyone that's kind of new to housing and um, really isn't familiar with uh, the the tools, really the best way is just to dive right in. Just dive right in. If if you're worried about messing something up, go to um, an alt plot maybe if you have one that's empty and you're not you know worried about what you might do on it and uh, just experiment, play around with um, moving it. Because I know for a lot of players, uh, it, it's even true like in the questing zones and stuff, a lot of people get overwhelmed with all the quests that get thrown at them and the challenges that pop up and all of the things going on. You know, it's the same way with housing. For me and a lot of us regular builders, we've been around it long enough, it's just kind of second nature that when we go to click something, it doesn't scare us when we see these things pop up because um, uh, I think um, I think it starts off like like this you get this little well no, see, <laughs> it still pops up for me I don't know 
the, I don't know, I guess because I use it, it just auto pops, I don't know. But um, you, in the beginning, I, I remember how confusing it was because um, depending on the orientation, whether you're using world or object, the arrows can change. Um, it doesn't now because I've got everything kind of squared off, but in certain cases um, it's different. Uh, like here, if I'm using object uh, uh, adjustments, or and it can affect how easy it is to line things up. That's just through a lot of trial and error experiment. Um, there were a few guides, and there are now, but I'm pretty sure most of them are out of date. Um, even with Katya's add-on that I use, um, hers hasn't been updated in a while. And there's so many new features, so it's scary for new players to come and say, you know, hey, how does this work? And really, all I can say is, if by watching someone like me or something only worsens it, then don't watch me. Just go and experiment on your own, and you'll, you'll eventually figure it out. It'll, you're liable to mess up. I did. I still do. Um, but, you know, that's the best teacher, in my opinion. Um, usually I go with five candles, but I'm just going to go with um, three today. And it's always nice to do, again, I like the tiered kind of um, thing where you kind of even it up. If I was to go five, I'd probably make it even shorter and just put it right on the ends. But we're going to keep it three. <clears throat> so then, you know, we're going for different kinds of... Uh, no problem. I hope uh, I hope you have good luck with it, because really, once you get into it um, and uh, get a little bit more confident in how to use the tools, um, you really will astound yourself at how fast you you progress in the complexity of what you're building. Um, in the beginning, don't worry about custom building. That's my main focus because I love the challenge of it, but it's not for everybody. So just start off with, you know, putting down a chair where a chair would go and a table where a table would go and and uh, all the little bits and get used to moving things and manipulating them. Then when you're comfortable with that, go to the next level and see about, well, what if I combine these two things in this configuration? What will that look like or how, how will it behave and that kind of stuff. Um, so just start small. Um, that's my, you know, personal advice. It's start small, start basic, and then work from there. Because um, I know it's intimidating to go to somebody's pot and they have this like huge, uh, fantastical, you know, landscape and and uh, a custom built house, and it's just like you're like ah, and um, really that's the wrong way to look at. Admire it. Um, take what you can from it, like for ideas and, and inspiration, but don't compare yourself to them because I guarantee they have been working on it for months and months and getting um, adept at using the tools. And if you're just starting, no one's going to expect you to spit out um, something fantastical like that. If you do, amazing, that's great. But don't, you know, put that pressure on yourself. Just start simple because when I look back at some of my earlier stuff, it's like, oh my gosh, that looks so awful and so barren. There's like hardly any details and stuff. But, you know, that's how we all start. And uh, it should be no different from anybody that started, you know, a year ago to anybody that starts now. Um, so you'll get there eventually. Um, but it does take a lot of patience and... Uh, you know, there will be things you'll go, oh my gosh, I ruined it. You maybe delete something that you didn't mean to, like I did earlier, and you just kind of, you know, don't give it a second thought. Just bring it back out and put it back together, and you're good. Thankfully, a lot of the bugs and issues that we had earlier um, have been fixed. Um, so uh, things like um, uh, you'd go to move something, and it would like like a linked set of something and then it would just kind of explode. Half of it would go over there and the other half is over here and parts of it just kind of went vamoose and you have to hunt and peck and maybe you spend hours working on that little combination of stuff and then it's all gone, you know, and then you have to start all over again. But 
Um, definitely, once you get into the housing, though, I recommend strongly that you um, pick up Katia's uh, toolkit add-on um, and Laments. Um, um, that's the one you see me using down here. That's Laments part. Um, it's a really quick and easy way for duplicating. Katia's has the duplicate as well, but you have to type in uh, Katia to get hers to load up every time. Because um, I don't like having this big old window here all the time. I like being able to look. Um, and of course, if you use the, the manager, it gets even bigger. So I usually close these down while I'm working on other things. And if I am doing a lot of copy and pasting, I just use Laments um, add-on for that. But I have links to all of that in my resource section on the, the Twitch channel page. And um, there's threads in the forums if you have questions. She's very, very helpful in uh, answering questions about her add-on if you're having errors or problems. Um, not only her, but myself and others will um, assist you on that. And if you have suggestions for things, if you discover something that it's missing and you want it, you know, she's happy to hear that because I think she's got like a, a mile long wish list of things that people want her to add it in. And uh, so the more people using it, the more ideas she gets and uh, hopefully she can improve it and make it better. Hey, Nordna. Okay, so back to the... Um, the centerpiece here. So basically all we've got is just the grass clumps and the candles and already it's already starting to take a little bit of shape. I mean you can kind of, you know, if you want to leave it basic like this, that's fine. If you want to add something else, you know, a little bit of extra color because it's all pretty much just yellow right now. Um, so pumpkins ideally is um, a good start. Uh, you could use the pumpkin groups of the group which is now just called pumpkins um, or you could go with singles I'm gonna try and see how the group one works and see if it will be favorable the main thing I'm looking at is the big one I know the little ones are probably gonna kind of disappear when the the big one is really small, but I'm just looking for, if it disappears too much, I may just change it to the, <coughs> to the single one, but uh, just kind of get a, gonna get an idea of a good placement for them. Again, this is just experimenting, playing around with ideas. Uh, you might find something that works better. Now, for a centerpiece, it can't just look good from one side. It has to look decent from all around. So definitely pay attention to what's going on here as far as um, what you have positioned because you don't want it to look uh, barren on one side. So we're going to... I don't want this to be an exact mirror of of each other, so I'm kind of putting them in different spots. If you don't like the 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 vine sticking out, you can turn it again if you want, but uh, I think we're going to leave it just to do it a little different. Okay, and I think that was all of the groups that I have. Um, so we'll just throw out the other singles. These things always come in so huge. So I'm mostly just looking to add a little bit of extra color um, so it doesn't look just like a big clump of grass. It's okay if it does, but for me, I like mine uh, just a little bit different. Okay. Uh, I think that looks all right. We don't want to get it too full of pumpkins. Okay, so now we have the pumpkins. Um, I think we had the herbanero things. Um, the only problem with those um, is you've got the the stem part to have to worry about as well. 
Um, so I'm going to see if I can get away with laying them to the side. I have a doubt that I'm going to be able to um, because these uh, roots here are pretty crazy, but we're going to try it. I'm hoping I can kind of tuck it down and it still won't be sticking out through the table too much. But it'll be a nice pop of brighter yellow than the other one. This will go on this side since it seems to be facing that way already. And it kind of looks like another type of melon or something, so I think it would be a good addition. Oh, crud. You see what I did there? I accidentally hit the place duplicate rather than the place on the thing, so I had to start all over again. Ah. Told ya, even us old pros mess up. Now, I notice that there's some of the the viney popping through, but you know, I'm not too um, saddened by that. I'm gonna make sure that it's not uh, looking out too much on the other side. I think that'll work because it adds a little extra funny grass stuff, and uh, I think that'll be okay. So my accident might have actually helped a little bit. I got three of these, so I'm going to see if I can get all three of them kind of in here in some funky way. We're going to put one more right about here, I think. This one's going to be a little trickier because I want it here, but I don't want the those pointy bits everywhere, so I'm going to make it smaller, and then I'm going to maybe, okay, that might be too small, try that again. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now we have one a little bit more colorful, a little bit more interesting than just the grass and candles. Um, you can just keep adding things in. You've got to get to a point, though, where you don't want to make it too busy. Um, I usually go for about three or four different things maximum. So we've got the grass, the pumpkins, and the habanero blooms. That's three. Um, you could go maybe one, maybe two more, but it's going to start getting a little crowded and things are going to be overlapping too much. You just want to kind of spot the, the main uh, bit of it. Uh, thanks, Bones. <laughs> Bones approves, so we're good. <laughs> um, if you don't want to use candles, you could use, um, there's the... Uh, uh, Cassian sconces. Again, you would probably have to be careful about the if there's any kind of bits coming down. See, you see the roots here, but if you put in the table bit, um, that should be fine. Um, but I think the, the 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 Cassian wall sconce is actually just a short little piece, so that should work really well. Um, the the tiered sconce, the one that's got like three of them together and they're kind of angled. Um, that one is actually on a pole, so that might pose a bit of a bit more of an issue. But like in a situation of maybe um, uh, along the mantelpiece, you might not have that problem if you can have it like just on the ends, like where the solid wall of the the fireplace would be. That might work well. It just really depends on where you're putting your decorations and how you're able to hide things. Um, the thinner stuff is, you know, if I kept this table just this thin. 
then I couldn't use all of the things that I am using now, especially like for the foods and stuff, because there's just a lot of things poking out. Uh, but you figure out ways to hide that, like with thickening the table um, to kind of disguise it. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. Another kind of centerpiece or something. Um, one thing you want to also uh, make sure of is even in real life, you don't want your centerpiece to be too huge. Because um, in theory, you don't want to block the view of um, your guests from side to side. Um, so this might actually be a little too tall in reality, but uh, since there's actually nobody sitting here and, and I'm not really having trouble, maybe just make sure the, the Grand Ox sit on, on either side of this so they're like way up above. But um, um, so you don't want, you know, something like way up here, so to speak, you know. Like if you want like um, some tall lamps or something, um, you could also do a chandelier type of thing. Um, we've seen several examples of those. Uh, uh, so rather than having the candles on the table, you could have them up here in the chandelier part or something. Um, trying to think, trying to think. Bowls, you could use bowls. Um, maybe a like a, a little tiny fountain sort of thing. Um, the only problem with that is with the uh, waterfalls, they do make a tremendous amount of noise. I went to a house um, a couple of days ago, and they had like um, for their faucets and their bathroom and in the kitchen and stuff, they had the waterfall, the little skinny one. Um, pouring out of it and it looked great from a distance but as you got closer it was like you know this really loud uh, waterfall noise this is the only thing I hate about those uh, I wish we had the ability to like either soften the sounds like have a volume slider or something or just have an option to say no sound effect on this particular piece of decor that would be awesome because there's a lot of like machine parts and things I would love to use for certain things because I want the motion that they have, but I don't want all that noise. And uh, it's kind of like the lop dancers. I've been hesitant to use them because they're so noisy. And because uh, they're cute to watch them dance, but you don't want to hear that, you know, rant, rant, rant all the time. It's just uh, disturbing. Yeah, the lobs, definitely the lobs. <clears throat> um, I know with the waterfalls, uh, I think Katya told me that uh, you can kind of get away with it if you make them really big. The sound box actually goes way down um, underneath the, the ground level, so uh, you can kind of get away from the sound that way because I think it's attached to wherever the little node is that you're moving it. But in respect to the, the smaller ones, which is what everybody's wanting water for, for like their bathroom and the sink and, you know, in the kitchen and, and things like that, that's not practical because the, you can't sink it further down in there because it's already too small. Yeah, uh, I've heard of uh, several uh, say the same thing, Bones. Bones says that they removed their lot party fab kit because it was so noisy. Um, like I said, I, I've got a few um, on my main that I was planning on using for the build that I have, but um, when I first put it down, I was like, oh, goodness, that's like so loud. Um, so I kind of created them back up. I may put them out there, but like way, 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 way off in the corner somewhere because um, I don't want that to be like a, a regular thing that people hear when they're in the main part of the... <laughs> well, they were determined, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, now they don't ha you don't have to do any maintenance on those things, so they never break and they're always yipping and yapping. But um yeah. So, um I'm trying to think of other types of 
um, centerpieces. Uh, you could just go with um, like bowls with candles inside them. You know, you don't have to have the, the grass and stuff if you don't want to get real leafy looking or whatever. Um, you could just stick with the food, making that the main showcase, uh, keeping it along the center thing. Um, you don't have to use the little um, able, I don't know what they call that. What do they call it? Able thingy? <laughs> I can't think of the name. I know it's got a name. Um, I am so out of it this morning. Uh, anyway, uh, you don't have to use this, um, but you know, if you want to add a little bit of contrast to your table, it might, you know, be helpful. Um, for this particular one, we're using red, but you could use other colors as well. I would probably stick, a, you know, away from uh, metal-looking ones, um, unless you're going with like the solid uh, metal, like uh, the back side of the uh, travel posters. Uh, that's a little bit more cleaner. The one that looks like the, the Chua metal and stuff, I think that looks a little eh. Um, unless you're using that for the actual tabletop, and then you you put the little table runner. That's the name. See? I knew I, I, knew I had it in there somewhere. <laughs> the table runner. Um, but uh, I would say if you're going to use it on your main table, if you have any other like little side tables or something, add that to them too. Um, just to kind of make it, you know, spread that uh, motif or decor around. Um, it's just like if you're going to go decorate for um, for Winterfest, uh, which I know a lot of people have been doing. I've already been seeing uh, lots of snow plots and uh, things with uh, holiday trees and, and stuff popping up. Uh, be sure and Take notice, you know, do just like you do in your home. Well, I assume a lot of you do it at your home. Don't just have the decorated tree. Don't forget, you know, maybe the, the door entryway, have a little decoration there. Atop your, your fireplace, um, have a little setting for your table. You know, even if it's just a little two-seater, you know, put a little, um, a great one um, for the Winterfest uh, would be the habanero, the, the red ones, the red flowers. Um, those work really good. And I already mentioned the, the mossy bush would be good for um, the greenery. You could also use uh, the fallen algorak pine, or I don't think it's called that anymore. I think it's called uh, squashed squash pine or something. Ugh, I don't remember what it's called. Hmm. Let's see if I can call it that on Katia's decor shopper. Ugh, I gotta scan the list for. Well, oh, may take a while. Anyway, um, uh, I think once you do this on a character, it stays in memory. Um, I've only done it on my main once, so it'll be a little bit. But while we're waiting on that. Um, I think it's called the squashed pine because it's like it's fallen. Uh, yeah, pine squash. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's squashed. I, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it confuses me because of the name changes that they gave a lot of the items. So it's a little tough to find some of them sometimes. Um, but I will mention uh, we're going to take a look here at some sneak peeks of stuff um, because. Uh, I noticed some more particle uh, bits like um, pillars of smoke and like rings of smoke and like um, sphere particles and things. So um, I've been like spying around. Um, these aren't things that are actually in the game as far as I'm aware. They're just things that are in the game system itself. There's things I guess they're planning to add or we're thinking about adding. Um, so. The decor shopper, while it says it's the shopper and you would assume that anything in the shopper is available to buy and, and get a hold of, it's not necessarily true as far as I know. Um, but I, I saw it because you can already preview um, a lot of the Winterfest stuff 
um, like the new signs and uh, the snowballs and things like that. <clears throat> nearly done, nearly done. But uh, it's been interesting to look at see, you know, some of the stuff that's coming because um, I just, you know, typing in random words and, you know, seeing what all it pulls up. And it's been kind of uplifting to see some of the, the things that they're thinking about. Okay, so I should be able to go in here. Yeah, okay, smashed. Algorok Pine smashed. I thought it was squashed. No, oh, it's close. It's close. There's um, the smashed one. Uh, the reason I say smashed is because um, it's a lot greener than the, the fallen one. Apparently, it's two different ones. I thought it was the same thing, but just renamed, but apparently not. Um, I think this one is crafted. I'm not sure about that one. Um, but you can see this one's a little bit more bluish green, whereas this one's a little brighter green. So this would be really good for um, if you put several of them together. Uh, you could do some kind of like a evergreen garland kind of thing. Um, but you can see there's already several things here that we don't um, actually have. Like I don't think this one's available just yet. A really pretty one. Really interesting shape and stuff. But um, like if you type in smoke, you get all these really wicked looking. I mean, look at that. How awesome is that? It's like this is like a cloud, a cloud of smoke. So you know, now you could have like certain areas that have some kind of funky haze on your plot, but then when you move out of that area, that would, you know, be cleared up. I think that's uh, a really good, interesting potential, but um, the, um, oops. here's the spheres. I don't know if you can really see it really good, but, you know, if you want to make, like right now, a lot of us want to have the, the snow um, kind of the, the sky but when you turn on the snow sky if you've got a custom built home above ground the snow goes straight through it there's no um, collision for the walls or anything so it snows inside your house plus the the snow sky is kind of on the dark side so it kind of dulls all the colors that you have and everything well if we have these particles, you know, while they're not actually snow, you could pretend that it's kind of snow. Cause I mean, there's the white one and there's the yellow one and there's apparently the blue one. And you could set that up in certain areas just out on the outside. Um, I don't know. It's more like, just kind of like, almost like fireflies, which reminds me, they do have little butterfly it doesn't show up on the preview thing but you can see it's like a little cluster of them there they are Ooh. and then you got the like the single how cute is that it's not in the game yet as far as I know but it's things that are like in the database of it or um, things that have you know it's there sort of but not there but you know, who wouldn't want a little butterfly on or flitter fly on their, their plot? Uh, as far as rain, let's see. I don't know. Okay, that's really disgusting. <laughs> <coughs> they got little strained mound. That's like a little volcano. And this is kind of like the ivy overgrowth, the leafy overgrowth we have, but then it's strain version. This is just nasty. Ugh. Um, one, uh, let's see, what was it? Um, uh, hill. We do have protostar insta hills. which may be interesting for those looking to add some shape to their plot. Uh, the only thing is, it's in that it's just the, the brown, looks like the hover part pieces. 
but they do have different contours. Um, maybe they come in different colors later, um, but this is the only ones I saw. Uh, but it looks like a spaceship, this one, like a Star Destroyer or something. But I thought those were interesting because, you know, we've been asking for ways to contour, you know, our landscapes um, better than having it just pure and flat. And we did have contoured in the beginning, but then there were people fussed about, well, if I want a metal floor, then I have to fuss with, you know, raising it up just to kind of hide all the lumpiness and stuff. And so I, I guess it's stuff in the works. Um, yeah, they've got water sprays, splashes, and an anomaly. Just really weird. You know, maybe you've got a leak, or uh, I guess this would be good for like um, a waterfall, the bottom of it. That would work. Yeah, I'll get the little plume of spray and, and stuff. Um. I don't know if there's actually a cloud of anything. Ah, yeah. Or a cloud blue. Again, would work probably pretty well for a waterfall thing. Green one, red one. This interesting stuff. Um, like I said, it's it's not um, available in game as far as I know, but it's something that the scanner picked up uh, as things um, in in there. Uh, just like all of the winter stuff we can already preview right here in the live game, even though they're not available just yet. But it's a handy way to kind of check it out. Whether or not everything we see here will become available, I'm not sure. I, I know a lot of this I saw on uh, the PTR. I don't remember this one showing up, though, so I'm not sure about that one. Um... Like this one, I don't remember this one being up. The only place I saw this was on the, the sky thing. Uh, I don't remember this one as well. Could be mistaken, but... Let's see. Yeah, I think I only saw this one. I only remember that one. And this one here so there's a few that you know show up that I didn't remember seeing in uh, the PTR yet but uh, it doesn't mean it might not come but if it doesn't you know don't hold it against me because I'm I'm just showing you what I see in the, in the shopper um, so the the data is there it's just not been you know switched on or whatever um, for snow um, we've got these uh, it's something you see on the, uh, I think it's the winter, uh, the White Veil biome. You see this cluster here. Uh, there's a snow-covered fern, a little bush. Uh, and of course the snowball. Look at that thing. Make your own snowman. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, there's the pillow heart. Looks like it's got a little confetti edging there. Um, the, the thing is, I have to know the name of it, and I don't know the name of all of them, so um, let me look up just pillow. See if anything pops. No. Um, was it called Valentine's? I don't know. Nothing there, apparently. I see. Um, I just look up red. There's alarm light. That looks funky. What the heck is that? Oh, logic field. I know that comes in several colors.
pretty weird looking. I try love you say. Let me try. Okay, there's the bed of love. <laughs> Got the little cupid on there. Oh my gosh. It's a little too uh <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> little two of love. Looks like it's got little hearts or something on the pillows as well. That's pretty out there. <laughs> I don't know. Oh gosh. Um what's what's in it? What'd you call the other one? Party girl? Let me look up party, I guess. Oh, well, that didn't call it much. I wonder why it's two different ones. It says party, lanterns red, and then lanterns red, outdoor party. What? That's like confusing. It's like somebody didn't get like the whole uh, renaming thing just right. Uh, I can look up plushie. I don't know if it's going to kind of wig out on me. Sometimes this uh, shopper thing, if it has too many items, it'll kind of like stack them all up in the corner and kind of give me an error, so we'll see. Um, I think all of these we've seen. Hey, there's the Chumbacabra. Chumbacabra. He's got a really big mustache or something. Um... Ah, yes, the Be Mine plushie. It's the pink um, skeet. Then the one for the Stim Dragon, he's all pink and cute. And then the Yeti. So, yeah, there's, there's things there, but, uh, <coughs> you know, there's no telling when and if they will pop out because, um, See, like, I know we've got the teal one because I found one of those myself, but I haven't seen um, or found uh, the ice one. But, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, figuring out the, the terms. Um, like, uh, you do screen, you get this one for the Ichthian bit with like the little bubblies. This, I can see a lot of people trying to use those as just like a chemical kit, you know, even though they're turned and kind of wonky. But then you got these little weird little screens. Different colors. And of course, we know we have these now, which are really fun because they come, you know, when you activate them, they got a little scene. Uh, I think one is of an Elden area, and then uh, the Dominion one is, uh, I don't know, Elevar or Derridune or something. It's pretty nifty. So that's a sneak peek at some things. But if you get uh, Katia's latest add-on um, version, you should be able to set it up with the, the decor shop art. Like I said, for the first time that you use it, you'll have to let it scan all the items. And, uh, oh, for the party, um, let me call that back up then. People are excited about looking at stuff that's coming. <laughs> um, here. Mm, I don't see anything different. Why they have three Marauder chairs is beyond me. Because these two are even named the same. That's kind of stupid. Um, swim? No. Maybe pool. No. Bottle, you say? No. And sand. Oh, they got a desert sand stem. Looks kind of weird. Almost like a weird dandelion. And then, a. Uh, I don't know, has they already got that one? Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, sorry. No, no linkies. 
Um, I don't allow the linkies. I had trouble with that in the past with people posting up some kind of malicious links and I don't want people clicking on the bad stuff. So I just did away with it all. Um, I don't look at the grass stuff. I guess that'd be the only new one. The blooming guild grass. I like the little sparklies that come off of it. It's a pretty plant, actually. Um, I'm trying to think anything else. Uh, Table, maybe. No. Oh, there's a hammock. <laughs> Somebody that's really been wanting a hammock instead of the hovering one. You know, you can get that. Uh, it's under string. Pretty much the ones we know about, I think. Um, uh, let's see, tree maybe. These all look familiar. Gassy bulb tree. That's questionable. Looks a little weird because the bits aren't even attached to it. Uh, I'm not sure. Or may well, they are, I guess, from the top, and they just kind of dangle off. That's. I don't know if it's. It moves a little bit, but I don't know. Maybe it makes a little poofer thing. Um, palm tree skinny. That one's kind of cute looking. A grasp tree. Just a single little thing. I see we had the skull tree thorny, but I don't remember it coming out for um, Shady, which I would think that would have been appropriate for, for that one. But, you know, who knows when this stuff will hit. This one is a uh, twisted thorn stalk tree. Nifty, nifty, nifty. See, uh, there's all the ones we got for Shady. And of course, the the holiday tree is coming soon. The zoom kind of tilts it a little bit. Um, window maybe. Yeah, there's a new uh, port window, and then they've got a whole series of different stained glass ones. Square one to go with the rectangular and the ship hand. Closed window. So there's like a lot of little doodads um, hidden around in here. So fingers crossed, you know, as we get, you know, more uh, patches that come in. Um, you know, no telling if it's strictly available. Um, you know, through an event, or if it's going to become available on the vendor uh, permanently, or if it's going to be, you know, um, event related, like a lot of the Winterfest stuff that's going to be strictly through event currency. So, now no telling when and how they're going to bring these in. Maybe some of them are just for the shop as well. Who knows? But it's it's always fun to time it, kind of take a take a look. But uh, I think we're going to call it um, for today. <coughs> Still kind of coughing and I don't want to stress it too much. But I hope you enjoyed um, just some of these ideas, um, like with the the whip topping for the, the pumpkin. I, I, I'm really happy with how that looks. And uh, the different ideas about table settings, you know, how to do napkins, you know, choices that you have. How to make it look like a pocket that kind of thing and of course uh, table settings that's always um, a nice way to dress up especially if you're going for a really long dining table um, when it's just a two-seater kind of thing you could probably get away with just having a little candle 
uh, on a cup or a little saucer or something and call it good. Um, but when it comes to the, you know, the big family, you know, style where you got like six to 12 chairs at the table, um, making it a little more grand and uh, festive looking um, really helps um, set a mood, especially if you're into role playing or you're looking to just, you know, maybe you're aiming for uh, a housing competition or something. Um, it's those extra bits that will make your stand out against other people's. Um, obviously, if everybody's adding little bits, then you're going to have to, you know, be even more creative about how you put your bits together. But, uh, you know, got to start somewhere. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, we may get back, if I can think of some other things that I want to try out, um, we may get back to it. But um, since Thanksgiving will be coming in the next few days, uh, probably won't be going back to the fall type of thing. So we may start experimenting with some of the, the winter stuff. Um, but it may not be here. Um, I am getting pretty close to going ahead and opening my mains plot. Um, it's not anywhere close to finished. I haven't even touched um, the bunker house yet, which I still, you know, have plans for it. It's just nothing's kind of solid on what kind of plans I have for it. Um, but the main uh, building is done, and uh, landscaping is probably pretty lame, but I think I'm going to leave it um, as it is for now. Um, and a lot of the decoration, uh, there's still a lot to do, but I'm also anticipating using a lot of the stuff that's coming with Winterfest. So um, there's a lot of places that will look kind of bare, but that's because I don't want to put anything in or use up all my decor because, you know, decor limit because I want to use some of the new stuff that's going to be coming. Um, so that will probably, probably be next week. Um, one of the main things I've been waiting on the last couple of days is a name. I've been having trouble naming the plot. Um, so I asked my guild to kind of uh, brainstorm with me. I gave them a list of possibilities that I had been thinking about over the last month or so and said, look, I can't decide, you know, which one do you think sounds better? Now, nobody's actually seen it. Um, there's a few people that know the theme that I'm going with, but uh, no one's actually seen it yet. So I just kind of described it for them and, you know, told them, you know, why I use certain words and uh, ask them which one do you think sounds the best. And there is one particular name that's standing out, uh, so I'm probably going to go with that one. And uh, once that's all settled, which I'll probably uh, confirm that this weekend, um, I'll open it up next week and we'll have a look-see around. And um, from here on, we'll probably uh, be streaming bits as I make them to add to it because uh, there's several things that I've got a lot of work to do, and uh, uh, I just feel if I don't open it up now, it's going to be, you know, next year before I do because I don't think it's going to be done anytime soon. Um, so look forward to that next week. You know, if you're interested in seeing what my plot is, and, and I've been anxiously awaiting to see what kind of build I've been putting together, then next week is the time to drop by. Um, we do have the Exile Tours on Wednesday. Um, let's see. Let me look, look. Yeah, next week is still, we're still kind of in November. Probably starting um, that first Wednesday of December and then on in, we'll probably start hunting specifically for winter plots. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a snow plot per se, but if there's like holiday decorations, even if it's a, you know, beach scene, but it has a Christmas tree on it, we'll probably drop by. Because uh, I'm looking for, to give people ideas and see what other people have been doing with theirs. And I already know of several plots that um, fit that description. They're either actual winter plots where they've set up, um, you know, uh, ice skating areas or things like that. Um, and I'm not just talking about the, the fab kit, but um, I think it will be fun. Kind of like what we did with Shadesy. We spent, you know, a couple of uh, tours dedicated to just spooky types of um, plots, and I'd like to do the same with uh, for the Winterfest. 
And um, I've also got something special on my plot starting up on the 1st of December. So that's another reason why I'm probably going to go ahead and open up uh, the place um, starting next week because that will give me time to kind of uh, get the word out that uh, we're going to be doing something on the 1st. Uh, it's nothing grand or anything. It's just something I'm going to be doing. It's um, and it's going to be started there, and, and you'll see more about that next week. I'll explain later. Um, and hopefully, with the new puffer thing, I'll be able to do the daily thing again through the week, um, and we can do a little extra more building um, than we have been. So, uh, in the meantime, I wish you guys a super duper weekend. Um, you know, if you have questions or, you know, want me to, uh, you know, brainstorm with you, um, feel free to poke me in game on the forums, on Twitch, on Twitter. You know, you can get a hold of me in a variety of ways. Um, I will mention again, um, I do belong to a housing um circle on Javit uh, EU. Uh, it's a small group right now. We got a few new members yesterday. Um, they came to us from uh, Javit 2 and uh, we're looking for some place to kind of call home. It's nothing official. They don't like have meetings or anything. It's not like a guild or anything. It's just a group of uh, housing fans that I think it started. It's Zizi. Um, she's uh, one of those that I did a uh, plot tour of and spotlight of uh, a while back. Um, they're like a building fanatic. They got like five or six alts, so they've got like full builds on all of them. Um, it's them and mostly their guildmates, but they invited me and I've been inviting a few others uh, outside of their little group to join us. And uh, if you're on Javit uh, EU and you're interested in joining um, a little discussion group for housing, Please uh, just poke me or um, whatever, and I'll see about getting you in. Um, it's mostly just we are there if somebody says, hey, I just built this. Can you come tell me what you think? We'll, we'll all go run over and take a look. Or if someone's saying, you know, I'm trying to build uh, this, you know, do you have any suggestions of what I could use for, for that? Um, like yesterday, I think somebody was asking how to make a, a soldier hat, like for a, like a nutcracker um, thing. Because like I said, a lot of people working on their Christmas plots, so uh, or winter fest plots, and uh, <clears throat> so people are struggling to try and figure out how they're going to make this. And so we were like, you know, well, can you use a bucket? And can you use this? And can you use that? And maybe if you tweak this and turn it upside down and squish it, you know, you can do it like that. Um, so. If you want some advice or just want, you know, uh, someone to touch base with when you want to, you know, maybe you could say, you know, hey, does anybody have a spaceship on their plot can I, that I can look at? Um, they can say either, yeah, I do or such and such does and they will direct you. Um, but yeah, just poke me in game about that and I'll, I'll get you into it. Because um, like I said, it's just a kind of a small group right now, but we're happy to grow because um, the more the merrier. Um, to that end, if you don't want to join a group and you're just looking for inspiration, be sure to check out the um, amazing builders threads. Um, there's one for Entity, if you happen to have access to Entity, and it covers both Exile and Dominion in the one thread. And then I have two threads, one for Exile and one for Dominion um, for Jabbit side. Uh, and uh, they're categorically listed um relatively up to date uh, i just went through it uh i think it was last week or so and purged a lot of places that had closed down for rebuilding and stuff but um uh, for the most part they all should be public and available uh, if you're looking for specific themes or um, you know like if you're interested in trying to do your own custom house there's a whole section with just custom housing um, that doesn't mean that 
all of the custom houses are only in that section. There are a few others that are elsewhere that fit better with a different kind of theme. But uh, in generally speaking, you can usually find what you want in those categories. Um, but uh, definitely check those out if you're, especially if you're new to housing and you're not sure just what all is possible. That will open your eyes to the just almost limitless possibilities of housing, um, given time and practice and uh, confidence in yourself. Um, you can really just about build anything you want. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly have. Uh, I love sharing and, and promoting uh, the housing system. It's, I, it is basically the main reason that I play the game. Uh, you know, I do the raiding, I do the dungeons and, and ship hand, well, expeditions and, and questing and stuff. It's all fine and dandy, but the main draw for me is the housing because I love the creativity of it. <clears throat> so anyway, um, Good luck with your own projects, and I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.